Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's good to see each and every one of you here this, eve this afternoon evening on this nice chilly uh, Christmas Eve day. Uh, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We've got uh, Patrick's going to play along on this first hymn, right? O come all ye faithful. And I believe that is hymn number 379. We take out our insert. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate God's love on the eve of the birth of our Savior Jesus. We know that our sin was the reason for his coming to earth. As we reflect on our sins, we realize that Jesus came to this earth to suffer and die on the cross. But he suffered and died so that we can be forgiven. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary so that he could die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I now invite any children forward for a special message. Oh, I should say a special message and a treat. Well, Merry Christmas, friends. Merry Christmas. Oh, this is rough. Let's try this again. Oh, uh, Merry Christmas, friends. Merry Christmas. All right. You know, I love Christmas time. There are so many things that you see only at Christmas time, like Christmas trees, poinsettias, sometimes special candles, decorations all over the place. And you know what? A lot of those things have meaning. One thing that you see usually only at Christmas time is a candy cane. Candy cane. All right, and candy canes, they have a lot of meaning and they can tell us about Jesus. Look, if I hold it like this, it looks like what letter? The letter J. And Jesus starts with J. We can think of Jesus, the letter J. And Jesus, of course, is the reason why we're here. We celebrate his birth. The angels proclaimed his birth to the shepherds. And if you turn this around, it's a shepherd's crook. Jesus came to be our Savior, and he came to be our good shepherd, to lead us and guide us. And sometimes sheep could take comfort in a shepherd's crook or a shepherd's staff, because that would protect them from the wolf if it tried to attack. The shepherd would use it to fight off the wolf. But it also would be used if the sheep was naughty. If it was going in the wrong direction, it'd put the crook around the head of the neck of the sheep and lead it back in the right direction. And that's why Jesus came, because we all make mistakes. We all go the wrong way. We don't always do what we're supposed to do or follow the rules like we're supposed to. And so Jesus came to be our shepherd, to lead us in the right way, and to do more than that. The color red reminds us that he shed his blood on the cross to forgive us. Because we do go the wrong way and make mistakes. That's why we needed a Savior in the first place. And the color red reminds us he shed his blood on the cross for you, so that your sins could be as white as snow. That your sins are washed away. And you're made pure. You're made clean by your Savior Jesus who died on the cross for you. And so the candy cane can help us tell our friends about Jesus at Christmas time. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for helping us to celebrate Christmas, the birth of your son Jesus, who died on the cross to wash away all our sins so that we could live with you forever. Amen. All right, come on up, friends. Come on up. Oh, 
Oh, look at this. I get to open a box just for you, huh? Our first reading for this Christmas Eve service comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 7th chapter, verses 10 through 14, on page 728 in your pew Bibles. And here we have the sign of the virgin birth. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. We continue by singing hymn 370, What Child Is This? Our next reading comes to us from the prophet Micah, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 2 through the first part of verse 5 on page 993. Here we hear that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor is given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be their peace. We sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, in 361.
We turn to the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25, on page 1032. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with the child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. We continue our worship by singing our next hymn, 376, Once in Royal David City. But Patrick in the back will sing the first verse as a solo. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was the mother. We turn to the Gospel of Luke, the Christmas story, the first seven verses on page 1096. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. So he registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. We sing him 364, Away in a Manger. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. We sing hymn 368, Angels We Have Heard on High.
When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with him 366. It came upon the midnight clear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Quite a few years ago now, back before I was even a pastor, I was just a lowly seminary student. I had a short conversation with the gentleman in the church that I was at every week, and he was usually there as well. And this man had recalled to me a short conversation he had with a co-worker. The man asked his co-worker how his Christmas Eve worship was. And the co-worker goes, Every year I go to the Christmas Eve service, and it's the same thing over and over and over again. It's a baby in a manger every single year. 
I find it funny when people like that guy's coworker complains that every Christmas Eve service is the same story about the same baby in the same manger with the same angels appearing to the same shepherds. I don't hear people complain about it when they watch the same story, Frosty the Snowman, year after year. Or when they watch Home Alone for the hundredth time. They still laugh when the guy steps on the nail on the basement steps and screams and falls over backwards. Then no one complains it's the same old story. Or when the family listens to the story the night before Christmas, no one ever says, you know, the Santa Claus thing is getting kind of boring. Or when you hear your favorite Christmas song, it doesn't become, oh, I can't stand this song anymore. Or we don't say about our favorite Christmas cookie, oh, I already know what that tastes like. I'm going to try something else. If you came here looking for something new, something bedazzling, something you haven't heard before, then you're probably going to go home disappointed. If you came here to hear a pastor talk about and make some Christmas connection to Elon Musk and Twitter, or say something ingenious about politics today, or wax poetically about Christmas movies, then this is the sermon not for you. Because this sermon, this service, this church, is about that baby laid in a manger. I can see this in my own self as I prepare a message for everyone. As I prepare for Christmas messages, I think to myself, what can I say in this message that I haven't said already at Christmas time? I mean, I think if I do the math right, I've probably written about 50 different Christmas sermons. What haven't I said about this baby? Or Mary and Joseph? Or how about the shepherds and angels? What have I missed? How can I keep people from falling asleep and getting bored? My own inclination is to do something different, something new, something attention-grabbing. I want to make you walk out of this church and say, now that was a Christmas sermon. But the temptation is there to drift away from the tried and true story of Jesus. But if we were to do that, well, then it's not a sermon anymore. It wouldn't be a Christmas message either. And instead, I'm here today to say with the angels, glory to God in the highest. Jesus is born for you. He is born for people who get bored of God and his message. He is born for the curious and those who haven't heard the story before. He's born for the people who say, ah, I've already heard this Bible story way too many times. Jesus is born, born for you whoever you are. Because whether you want to admit it or not, you needed Jesus to be born. And that's truly the sad part of the story. You and I need Jesus to be humbly born, to have angels proclaim him to shepherds. It's your own selfishness, our own sinfulness, that brought Jesus into this world. You can see in the fact in how hard you try to have control over your life, especially over the things you don't have control over, but you wish you had. You want to be Lord of your own life as if you think you could actually ever have that control. You want to be able to say, I don't need a Savior born for me. I'm doing just fine on my own. But the spiritual reality is quite clear. None of us are good enough, no matter what you might find from Santa under the tree. We aren't in control. And we never will be. The fact of the matter is that experience and age in this world, when we get older and older, it teaches us this over and over and over again. You aren't in control. And you won't be. And when you try to take control from God, take it away from him, that's going to lead you down some seriously scary and dangerous path. And this is why Christmas becomes amazing. The one who's in control, the one who hears and sees everything, becomes a tiny human baby 
He needed to be burped and fed. His diaper needed to be changed. He needed to be wrapped in swaddling cloths. He needed to be on a schedule as any little baby needs. Because that's what he made himself to be. A baby in human flesh. And he did this so that one day a Roman soldier would dress him with the crown of thorns. He became human for you so that he could take upon all the sins you have on himself. All those thoughts, feelings, and actions you shouldn't have. He came to go from the manger cradle to the cradle of the cross so that he could forgive you. He could show you the truth. He loves you. There's no limit to his love and forgiveness for you because he became human for you. He suffered for you. He died for you. He rose for you. And that's the story we need to hear whether you want to or not. For the story of God's love in a manger that would become God's love on a cross and in an empty tomb. It's a story that shows God's love for you that will endure forever. If you go back to my opening story, the man that had talked with his co-worker friend who complained that it was the same story year after year at Christmas Eve had a very simple response to his complaint. He said, Thanks be to God for that same story every year. Thanks be to God that Jesus is born for you because he loves you and he always will. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you can find in the back cover of your hymnal. Please stand. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our offering. We continue our worship with our prayers. Remember those listed in our bulletin. We also pray for Jeff in the back there, who's, 
who's uh, recovering from surgery, and he's still kicking, right, Jeff? Kind of. All right. Well, please stand for prayer. Almighty God, by the incarnation of your eternal Son, you revealed that you are love. Give us true faith in Christ and his promise that by his conception, virgin birth, holy life, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection, our sins are forgiven and we are yours. Fill us with joy and lead us to proclaim your glad tidings to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, by his birth in human flesh, your dear son took his place in the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless the families of our church and our country that men and women would live faithfully as husbands and wives, loving and caring for their children and nurturing them in the grace of baptism and all the truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son, born in Bethlehem, is the Son of David and the Lord of David, to whom every knee shall bow. Look upon those you have placed in authority, including Joseph, our President, and Tony, our Governor, and grant that they would govern in wisdom and justice. Provide peace to people who are ravaged by abuse and violence throughout our country and, well, and warfare around the world, including the people in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you love us and sent your Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Strengthen us to love one another. As you have mercy upon all who are poor and troubled, so perfect your love in us, that we would gladly be your instruments of help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, in the birth of your Son, you have visited and redeemed your people. Continue to visit those who are lonely, sick, recovering, or near death, especially Jeff, Carol, Leroy, Tim, David, Jerry, Helen, Carol, Lynn, Helen, Sherry, Harold, Elmer, Jan, Kathy, Debbie, Chris, Rich, Linda, Bridge, and Iwona. Let your presence be a comfort to them and give them perseverance until the time you grant healing, relief, deliverance, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who placed Jesus in the Holy Family, help the families of Trinity Lutheran School to know and believe in you and your Son. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, dear Lord, for the saints who received your blessing of righteousness in Christ and now stand in the most holy place before your throne. Preserve us by your grace and the holiness of Christ, that we too may dwell in your light and life for eternity. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now continue our worship with the lighting of our candles. I'll light my candle from the Christ candle, then Brant will come and light his. Please remember to tip your unlit candle towards the lit candle. After Brant gets to the last pew, then he'll shut all the lights off for us in the back.
light's importance was shown on the very first day of creation. And God said, But then humans corrupted God's creation with sin. We needed something greater than created light. We needed the light of the world to come and shine in our lives forever. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the darkness is not overcome it. Christmas is the celebration the light of the world has come. The people who walked in darkness, those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now as we celebrate his birth, we await the light's return. And the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. And night will be no more. They will need no light of a lamp or sun. Sing to the Lord a new song. We sing Silent Night. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may extinguish your candle and uh, remain standing for our closing hymn 387.
joy to the world. Please be seated. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this evening on this Christmas Eve as we celebrate the birth of Jesus born for each of you. Um, let us conclude with the Bible verse of the month. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Blessed Christmas celebration to each of you.